So now let us just quickly include our this login.php backend uh, file in our API connection from the Flutter application. So for that purpose, let us just go back to our Flutter application. In here we have API connection, API connection dot dot file, and just like we include here the sign up and validate email in the same way, we can include our login.php. So we can give it name as login, and inside the user folder we have our login.php host connect you already know is basically our api cloud store which is basically our api cloud store okay or if i show you in the visual studio code then basically this is our api cloud store which is basically our api which is responsible for communication with the mysql server or you can say with the mysql database so anyways now we have included that the next thing is we will go back to the authentication where we have login screen dot dot file and when the user click on the login button then in that case we will call up here a method login user now we call this method here which we will implement now login user now so copy this name and come here above the widget build we can say login user now it will be a synchronous method and then make sure to import here the http dot dot as http in the same way just like on our sign up screen dot dot file what we will do first we will communicate with the server that is we will pass the body that is the uh, user email password in case of login and uh, with the help of our api.login.php file we will communicate with the server so for the time saving i will just copy this code from here on our login screen dot dot file we can simply pass that so now you know that we are communicating with the server for the purpose of login okay so api dot login you know that api dot login is basically our login dot php backend code which is basically responsible for communication with the server for the purpose of login that is to allow the user to login successfully or not if the email password is correct then the user will be allowed to uh, uh, sign in successfully otherwise the user will not be allowed to sign in if the email or password is incorrect now the next thing comes the body that is which information we are passing so you know that we are passing the user email and user password okay which will be received here on our login.php file so for that purpose we will use the same key name by which it is receiving here okay so we are receiving it here by the key name user underscore email so let's pass it it is user underscore email key name so by this key name we have to assign the value to it so it is email the value of it is saved inside the email controller dot text okay just like this so we pass the user email from here next comes the password which we receive here by the key name user underscore password so we can say that user underscore password just like this so password controller dot text now after when this code is executed you know that we have to check if it is executed successfully or not which is basically the from flutter app the connection with api to server if that is success or not okay so let's just copy this if condition and then after the variable response that is after this we can simply pass that code here so this is when the status code is 200 it means success so then we get the response from the server that is the it will be either uh, the if condition that is either the user is allowed to log in or the user is not allowed to log in that is the if else condition so 
that response we assign to our as you know we are on the login screen now so let's give it name as response body of login response body of login let's move this so we say that is if the response body of login okay success which simply means that the success will have either the value true or it will have either the value false so success key if that is true if that is true it means congratulations you are sign up you are logged in successfully or you can say you are logged in just okay you are logged in successfully in case if the success key value is false that is when this else statement execute so in that case you already know that it simply means that the user email or password is incorrect so we will say please write correct password or email okay try again or you can say incorrect email and password try again so it is totally up to you okay or you can also write a long message like this incorrect credentials which means either password or email is incorrect okay so we say please write correct password or email and try again just like this if you want to move this to the next line in the toast message then you can use this slash n so anyways this is in case when the success key has a value false that is user email or password is incorrect in case when the user email password is correct that is when success is true the user is allowed to log in so alongside with the success key value we are also passing something which is response body of login which we can receive if I show you basically we are passing the user data so we have to receive this user data which contains the user record values okay the user record values simply means that the user ID user name user email user password which will be in JSON format so that JSON data or you can say user record which is in JSON format that we have to receive by the user data key so let's just do that we can simply say user data just like this and as I told you this will be in JSON format so we have to convert it from the JSON format to the normal format you can say so for that purpose what we need to do is we need to basically go back to our model user dot dot file okay and in here we can say factory user dot from JSON map string dynamic as you know the key name is always in string and the value of it is in dynamic format that is it can be either string or int or double data type whatever it is okay and let's give it the name JSON user so first of all we have the ID which is basically the user ID and you know that it is the integer data type so that's why we have to parse so we can say int dot parse and then the data which is coming is it is user underscore ID from the user ID column then we have the user underscore name and then email and password so user email user password So now from our login screen we have to pass this JSON data 
to our user dot from json just like this okay so this json data we pass to from json in simple words from json will help us uh, getting the user id from this json format that is the user id user name user email and user password it will get from it okay and this is the user id name email and password of the user who logged in successfully okay that specific user data now we have to assign this specific user data for later usage in the app for example this user will add item to the cart and we have to also implement the feature that if, if the user is already logged in then we have to remember that specific user credential that is this user is already logged in okay so he whenever he closed the app and then let's say after two days if he open up the app again then he will be directly sent to the main screen because that user is already logged in okay so we have to remember the credential that is the that is this user is already logged in so that information basically we have to uh, saved to the local storage with the help of shared preferences and that is something which we will do in the next video for now this information which is basically the in order to remember the user that is user id user name user email user password we have to assign this to user info okay so this user info now contain this information id name email and password so now as we have the user that specific user complete information that specific user who logged in successfully so as i told you using this information we have to save using the shared references to the local storage okay in order to remember this user so that is something which we will do in the next video let me write here a inform a comment that is save user info to local storage using shared preferences